another pinning tray video build? Jesus, can't you get enough of it? I mean, you, you did the one about the world's most expensive pinning tray using the 3D printer. You showed us how to make one out of this uh, Epicurean cutting board for you can buy for about $12. But you know what? Everybody needs a pinning tray, and the ones that are advertised that we pay for are mostly crap. I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful pinning tray absolutely for free. It's just going to take a little bit of your time. And here, this is uh, the one I made. This took me about 30 minutes absolutely free. I said, well, why is it free? Well, fellas, if you go, I can't tell you the name of my favorite hardware store where I was walking around today. I don't want to get sued. But if you go to the flooring department, uh, you're looking for a product called, um, let me see here, called Pergo. There we go. It comes in a wide variety of finishes. They even have colors. I grabbed all the wooden ones because I like the the wood finish look. And Pergo is a plastic material on the layered here. Sandwiched in between is some kind of wood fiber, pressed wood, and then the, on the other side uh, is some kind of plastic. It's perfect for what we need. These, are me these measure five inches across, three and a half inches going this way. Just go in there and tell them you're looking to redo your living room floor and grab a few samples and you're ready to go. Now, how are we going to do it? Well, the first thing we want to do, uh, we want to lay these things out so it's just uh, not nilly-willy. And I, I like to have a border around the sides here. And so I'm going to go ahead and just use a ruler and a square. These things come perfectly square. Now, what I will tell you is when you go to buy, get your free sample, find one that's cut from the center. In other words, it's, it's square on all four sides like this. They do cut them out of real flooring material and so sometimes you'll see that lip hanging on one side or or the other. So find one of the center cut samples so that it's perfectly square. I mean, if we're going to use it, let's get one perfect for our needs. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do our measurements and I'm going to draw a border around the edge of this because I don't want my groove to come too close. So let me go ahead and draw that and I'll be right back. Alright, I'm an engineer so I like to work with uh, the metric system in millimeters and I made this 10 millimeters on uh, border all the way around. Now what we want to do, we want to draw the lines that we're going to follow with our Dremel tool down the center for their grooves. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure what we have between these two lines and we come up, it's about 105. So we take 105 and we divide it by 8. Uh, I know we only need seven slots, but we're not going to do this last line. We're just going to cut seven of them. So divided by eight, and you come up with uh, about 13. So let's go ahead and segment this off with seven lines where our grooves are going to be. All right, there we go. So far, you're not counting your trip to uh, your hardware store. You've got about maybe 10 minutes invested in this thing. Now remember, these border lines, you want to do those in pencil. The only ones we want to do in ink so we can see them and they won't get worn off when we're trying to, to Dremel tool them out are these vertical lines. Now how are we going to get those out? Well, you're going to use one of these. This comes with the Dremel, cool kit, Dremel tool basic tool kit. And all we're going to do, it fits in these grooves just perfectly to to route out uh, this. If you have a router, of course, that makes it even easier. But the reason I like to use the round ball is because we want the bottom of these to be rounded. So if our pin is in there, we can take our finger and we can scoop it out. We don't have to fight around with any sharp corners. So that's why I like to use a rounded edge. There's a couple of them that come in that basic kit. This one works as well. Now when you do your, your Dremel tool, what you might want to do is take a steel ruler, or if you have a piece of steel scrap, and lie it on there. That way you can maintain the straight lines as you see here. If you try to do it by hand, you can still do it. It just doesn't look quite as neat. So I can Dremel out one side, then I'll take the rule and move it to the other side. I'll Dremel tool that side, and then by hand you can do both ends. To get one of these to the to the, about the same depth, these are a little bit variable in depth. I got some slop thrown in here, but uh, it, won't, it only takes you about two or three minutes to do one of these slots, once you get the hang of it. All right, so let's go take care of that, and let's route these out. All right, fellas, there you go. It took me 24 minutes to do that. What I can tell you from first-hand experience, don't do this at your kitchen table, because your wife is liable to get really upset. Try to do it out in the backyard. That's, that's, that's my advice. Anyway, came out pretty good, free. Go to your local hardware store, look for a product called Pergo, get yourself a free sample or a stack of free samples, and you can be pumping these babies out better than anything you can buy and absolutely free. Thanks for your time, fellas. Everybody stay safe, stay legal.